Court orders at the president. Does the Buhari-led administration obey court orders? And Nigeria resolves the spiritual warfare on terrorism as Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tokobura Tai says terrorism cannot be defeated by warfare alone. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. The incarceration of Omoyele Showare, Sambo Dasuki, Elza Zaki and Abubakar Idris Dadiata has continued even though court orders granting these individuals bail has been issued. Are we living in a modern day totalitarian state or is there something the judiciary isn't telling us? Joining me to discuss this are two Leonard Gentleman, the legal practitioners, Nobel Obasi joins us. Thank you very much. And of course, we have Emeka Mwadioke. Thank you very much Thank for joining so us. Much. According to the poll, uh, this uh, report is from Punch. They actually did a poll on your website and they came up with this. Uh, they cited the cases of Omoyele, El Zagzaki, Dasuki, and you know, the likes. Why do we have this scenario? What is your reaction first to the report? Oh, well, uh, first of all, the punch report is more of um, gauging the opinion of the, popula of the population in terms of what they feel about the government's uh, responsibility in terms of obeying court order. So, to, to, I, 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 well, I think the opinion shouldn't be, to, well, to an extent, it, it's, it's been uh, taken on Nigeria for the Nigeria people, but to an extent, I wouldn't think the opinion um, should really, really, really count like that. Though it's a reflection of the voices, of the conscience, of the thoughts of the people, but to an extent, it's a fraction of the population. Let me rephrase that question to you, um, Mr. Mecca. They had about um, 8,000 on Twitter, 8,000 people. We are just trying to sum the figure. Mm -hmm. And then on, uh, on their website, they had about 2,000 plus people. Um, react to that poll giving their opinion yes. of these two would just say roughly ten thousand yes. to fifteen thousand let's max it out that much mm -hmm. compare that to 200 million nigerians yes. um he was expressing some reservation do you share it but let's not forget that in that uh, poll like 80 something percent even within that short frame of um, uh, polling uh, respondents said something is wrong. What's your reaction? Is it enough to gauge Nigerians speaking? Yes, like, um, thank you. Uh, I think the, um, the, the poll on... Um, the punch. On the punch. The, the one, I think on their website, yes. also, uh, it has almost 90% you know, um, deriding the government for its uh, human rights record. And uh, the one we have uh, with, uh, on the Twitter had about over 80 percent. So um, when you take the two together, uh, it's quite uh, conclusive that uh, the government is not doing uh, very well as regards human rights. Um, so as regards the um, validity of the, the poll, uh, you, you, you always know that there's no way, maybe, except your INEC. You even INEC the, the general election, you probably get a maximum 40%. We've never even got probably up to that. Um, so uh, I, I, it will always be a representative um, population sample. But I think the key thing is to see um, how representative is this, because you need to have spread and all that. So um, I'm not sure the, the, the portion I read did not really uh, indicate as regards the methodology and all that as regards uh, to probably begin to dimension the, the validity of the, of, the, of the poll. But I will still hazard that it's uh, very close to the reality because uh, that's, that's essentially what Nigerians really will uh, um, come to when they uh, try to assess this government as regards its human rights record. Yeah, we will we'll definitely touch on the Shores case again because it came up for hearing today. But let's look at in depth some of these reactions that you know came with the poll. I'll start with um, 
one of them, berating uh, Showery, says treasonable felony is not a bailable offence. And uh, the person is saying Showery's fans should study the charges levelled against their mentor. Uh, as legal practitioners, how true is this? Is treasonable felony not bailable? Ad Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, definitely, but uh, treasonable, treasonable felony is bailable. Even murder, as serious as murder, murder is. Uh, I recall maybe the case of Mohammed Abacha or something like that. Someone like that. There was uh, there was bail was granted on okay. on ground of uh, maybe uh, ill health and, and and all that. So um, there's there's virtually no no known. I'm not aware of any offence in Nigeria that if the grounds are you know valid the court cannot ground, uh, grant bail because at the at the end of the day the essence of bail is actually um that the person will be available to stand trial insofar as the the the, the defendant or is will be available to stand trial under whatever conditions the court would have uh, granted that's bail. It's as simple as that. So anyone can be granted bail on any. At any rate, you saw that he was actually granted bail by by the court. So are they saying that the judge good. doesn't know what he's, he's doing? No, but the, 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 the truth know. of the matter, the reason um, I'm saying we should take a look at some of the comments and you know reaction of people on social media and on the website of Pont is a credible uh, platform, right? These are people submitting their opinion, and this is like a reflection to a certain degree of how most Nigerians think. And the essence of this program in its entirety is to educate and bring the other Nigerian in the know so we don't go around peddling information uh, like this. Um, let's go to the other one that I uh, also saw that I thought it's of interest. Uh, another commentator said Buhari is misbehaving because the judiciary does not know it's what. They are beggars. If they are not corrupt, they, that is the judges in brackets, should have resigned and left the seats for the president to uh, occupy. This is another position mm -hmm. that the uh, Buhari is misbehaving because the judiciary does not know it's what. I, I'll put that question to you, Noble. How would you react seeing this from a lay Nigerian? Okay, so from the perspective of a lay Nigerian, um, an average Nigerian would see uh, the judiciary has been an appendage of the executive. But then again, according to the Constitution, there is separation of power between all the three arms of government. Even though there are times when one would have to have recourse to the other parts of the other arms of government. So, flowing from the assertion of uh, the commentator that uh, Buhari is misbehaving simply because the ju judiciary, you know, gets perhaps gets payment or gets any kind of um, probably. Uh, the Say key word there is that they don't seem to know their what. They don't seem to know their <laughs> what. Okay, so I'll, I'll, to the best uh, to the best of my knowledge, I'll, I'll, I would say that the, the, the judiciary they do they do know their worth. They know their worth, even though it's the regular Nigerian perception that the judiciary, that judiciary is being caged by the government. But yeah, of, of, obviously, um, we see some of the cases where uh, the judiciary has given uh, given rulings, given judgment, even against the government. But the issue now is in terms of enforceability, okay? So to an average Nigeria, they believe that whenever a case is against the government, that the government, the government does not um, dance to the tune of the court because of their overriding interest in the court. But let's look at it purely. The judiciary and the executive, they are two completely different arms of government. Even though sometimes you perceive that the executive is kind of trying to um, 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 swing let me, let, me, let me interrupt you and uh, present this scenario. Uh, okay. Today in this country, we see the government say um, the rule of law, the rule of law. They run to the court when they need a judgment. When that judgment is in favor of the government, we don't seem to have any problem. Yeah. But if that judgment does not meet the needs of the government as at that time, as we see in the case of Shawari, we see a flagrant disobedience of court order. They kept, even despite the court order releasing this guy on bail, he was held on. We have Dasuki, we have Elza Zaki before, you know, we got some uh, light. So, in your reaction, is 
the judiciary are aware of its strength in enforcing, in making the law, I mean, ensuring that justice is done? Uh, definitely. The, the judiciary is aware of its powers. And um, it's, it, yes, it's, it's aware Being of its Being aware powers. and utilizing it are two different yes, things. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, the, the fact needs to be said that um, we are in a very serious situation in this country. Uh, a situation where uh, we are almost in, like, in a state of anomaly. Uh, a situation where court orders are flagrantly uh, disobeyed by the, the government. It's a very serious uh, situation. In fact, it, it's actually not supposed to be a subject of discussion, but sadly we are discussing it. Because ordinarily, like uh, my colleague hinted, there are separation of powers. So the executive is supposed to do certain things. The judiciary is supposed to interpret the law. The legislature makes the law. The rules are very clear cut. But when you see a situation where, just like you hinted, when it uh, suits the government, it obeys a court order. When it wants uh, a particular order, it rushes to the same court. Then when the court grants the order against, uh, the, the, against the government or its agency, it decides to dis, uh, disobey that order. It's, it's very pathetic. And um, it's not as if the judiciary doesn't know its powers. But there are constraints. For instance, if you want to, the, 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 the traditional uh, method would be to issue con contempt uh, proceedings against the uh, such officers. But for instance, assuming you issue contempt of proceeding against the IG of police, who is going to execute that contempt to arrest the IG? It's still a police officer. So which sergeant or whoever will go and say, IG, I want to arrest you because they're so... They are the ones that are supposed to be enforcing Yes, so the there are even this challenge, this uh, idea that maybe the court should have an enforcement arm so that you don't have this kind of challenge. But fundamentally, um, it's just about the leadership of the executive, which is supposed to actually tell its agencies and its officers to obey these law, these uh, orders. It's as simple as that. In other climes where things work, that's how it's done. And you don't have these uh, challenges that are almost making us look like a toddlers. Yeah, in, at, in a roundabout way, at the judiciary, even knowing its powers, is um, probably. Um, I think a lawyer has used that word here, a uh, toothless bulldog, uh, in this case. Uh, but let's look at, let's l move away a bit from the, uh, not completely away. The, I'm talking about the Nigerian Bar Association now. Um, all the while we've been having all this scenario, government um, disobeying court orders, we've not had them be vocal as an association that is supposed to represent legal minds in this country. But they have finally woken up and they've um, issued a statement. Uh, their statement is berating, berating rather, uh, the Buhari government and the DSS for disobeying uh, order. I've asked this question before on this show. I think I've even put that question to you before. I'm going to put it to you. Can the judiciary do more? Associations like the Nigerian Bar Association, can they do more? Are there mechanisms that are available for them to press on the government to do the needful to obey court orders? Oh, it's a tough question. And um, incidentally, uh, I've not had a lot of opportunities to comment the uh, Nigerian Bar Association on its, uh, on its performance. Uh, so on this particular occasion, uh, I guess I'll commend them for, the, for taking that position. Um, because it's the right thing to do. And um, I'm not equally sure it's entirely correct to say that the MBA hasn't probably done uh, uh, one or two things to uh, safeguard the rule of law. Because incidentally, our motto uh, is uh, protecting the rule of law. So, um, so you, you, you safeguarding the rule of law. Or something. So that challenge has always been there. And uh, like, uh, like I said, um, some of us think that MBA should do more. I know that we are a bit um, strident as regards the subject of rule of law during the issue of uh, uh, former justice, Chief of Justice of Nigeria, 
Justice uh, Walter Nogan. Uh, they came out, they even called for uh, a strike, you know. So I think this is even what we need now uh, because obviously we cannot continue like this. A situation where almost for three years now, uh, uh, Federal High Court has given order, in fact, by December it's probably three years, uh, on Dasuki is not been uh, obeyed. I think Dasuki was even uh, uh, three years in August. Uh, the uh, other gentleman of uh, IMN, Islamic uh, movement, should be three years in uh, December. The law, has, the, the court has not, uh, the order has not been obeyed, and several uh, uh, of that. So for me, just like uh, both uh, Falan or senior advocate and um, uh, called, and even the MB at some point that the bar, both the bar and the bench, you know, have to really sit up to know how to tackle this, uh, this challenge because it's quite uh, debilitating and obviously it cannot continue. Because, like they keep saying, even investors, they cannot come in a climb where there's no uh, rule of law and predictability of what the courts will say and do. And that's why you see even investments going to climbs that are, have better uh, framework for rule of law. So what is the relevance of court orders? I mean, it seems like a silly question to ask, but it's a fair question because the court is doing its job. It's issuing these court orders. What is its relevance? Because someone is asking that same question. Okay. So the relevance of court order is just for sanity to be restored in the land. Because if a court gives an order, the order is being tried from all reasonable facets from you know from the judges who gave uh, the ruling or the judgment because they must have considered so many factors so the relevance for the relevance of court judgments is for it to be obeyed and obeyed to the letter so if any party is not obeying the court any court order then i think it's it's, it's something that is worrisome i think it's something that needs to be looked into so a situation where the federal government they fail to obey court order i don't think they should be showing that type of example because everyone looks up to the federal government and if federal government is not putting their legs down to say this is what this is how we want this country to be i don't think this country would be better i think it would be lawless Okay, let, let's look at the side of the government now, because for some reason they say, that even when the court issues and then they think of national security, they, are, they might be, uh, they might find a new way to get away with their action. Uh, but there is also the school of thought that is worried about the character of the people that are being um, held in detention. Uh, one uh, person, B. Demi, uh, wrote that, check the character of people that has been re uh, refused release check the weight of the offenses and re-examine yourselves. Uh, don't we have cases in the land going smoothly as expected? So I'm going to pose that question to you, basically, uh, you know, is the offense enough? Like, this one is treasonable felony now, and then we have the Dasuki case, also felony and all of that. Is the offense enough to hold them? Is national security enough? You know, that reminds me of... Uh uh, the, 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 that was, I think, last year when uh, the president attended uh, our uh, annual general conference and then said that uh, the, uh, the national security uh, can always trump the rule of law. And uh, of course, the, you saw the outcry yeah, everywhere. I it was that. massive. I think somehow they recounted, uh, which uh, they ought to do. So, uh, so that said, uh, it's obvious that there's no, like I st stated earlier, there's no, 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 no level of offense that, you know, for instance, is not bailable, like I said. It's for the courts to decide. Now, in this instance of uh, Showere, um, a senior advocate of uh, Femi Falano standing said, I'm going to take this gentleman on bail. That means Falano is taking his career, his practicing license, and everything. That if this gentleman, at any rate, you know that the, the essence of shortyship is that if the person runs away, you can actually be put in his position and tried for, for that Inquire, offense. Yes. Or, you know, and depending on the, 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 the bail uh, conditions and all that. So 
you see that it's a very serious. So for him to stake his decision, knowing that anytime this gentleman is wanted in court, he's going to bring him to court to face his trial. And if he's convicted, he goes to jail. If he's not, he goes home. So why would you now sit in the comfort of your uh, office as uh, DSS and determine that the court you know, has, um, uh, has not ruled properly and that you should disobey that order? It's never done. Because the whole essence of submitting the case to court is that the court is, an, is a neutral arbiter to decide between parties. So uh, you've come to court for justice. The defendant has come to court for justice. So you leave the matter to court to decide. It's not for you to begin to decide, uh, pick and choose which you know, uh, ruling is proper or improper. You never, you never do that. It's not in your place to do that. It's for the court to, to decide. Let's look at the Shores case again that came up today. I, I think we still have a little time to cover that. Um, he has been remanded in the custody of the um, DSS. What happens to that bail that was given to him earlier? Let me bring the question to you. OK, so I mean, uh, in all sincerity, the first bail ought to stand. OK, so he has been granted bail on an offense. But the bail conditions, I think he has made those bail conditions. But however, he has not been released based on those conditions. Because today's own, so when, when, I, when I was uh, looking at you know, how the proceedings was going, I, um, they said, they, I heard something that, uh, that the reason why he would not be granted bail on this second, on, this, on, the, on the other offenses, on the other allegation, is because they were separate allegations from the first allegation which he was granted bail for. So I feel the first bail should stand, isolated, then they can now perhaps bring him to court, and he can now perhaps apply for another bill on that same matter. So I believe he should be, right now, he should be a free man. Yeah, then, but, the, but the judge in this case yes. um, is, is not paying attention to the previous matter. Mm -hmm. what, what do you make of the judge's ruling in this matter, saying dismissing the one given by Taiwo Taiwo and in giving another when that man is still incarcerated? It's, it's very tragic because what we are even seeing is the same court. You're not even talking of maybe you took him to National Industrial Court, which obviously doesn't have a jurisdiction, or Lagos High Court of Abuja FCT High Court. You know, you took him to the Federal High Court. A particular judge granted him bail. You refused. Then you bring him back the next day before another judge of the same court with coordinate jurisdiction and powers. It's ridiculous. So is that the, something the, the only thing they did the is probably to, to, to join an additional defendant to make it look like it's a new case and maybe not on, the, on all fours with the previous case. But essentially, we know that this case is about treason and about whatever they said, abusing the, the president or whatever. So obviously, it's the same case. They are just basically forum shopping. And forum shopping is you didn't get what you want in this particular court, you run to another court, it's abuse of process, fair and simple. Yeah, I'm told we have limited time, but I, I wanted us to see a little of the video of a show array um, in court today. That video is all over the social media. Um, his reaction, uh, he was attempting to speak to the press and then he was being pulled uh, on the other side. Let's just see that video and then I'll get your reactions before we wrap up this segment. Communicado for almost 60 days now. And you can see them in the back. Uh, this is the warmest country, and that is why Nigeria must fight for its soul and ensure that the revolution that gives our people a chance to have control of their own. Revolution! Revolution! Revolution!
what does that video say to you? We have less than two minutes. So you take one, you take one. Your reaction to that video quickly. Uh, basically, it's neither here nor there. Should um, he have spoken to the press? Why not? He's a free man. What, the, what our constitution says, not even any ordinary law, our constitution says that you're innocent until proven guilty. So until that court pronounces him guilty, he remains innocent and a free man to, to say and do whatever. Whatever he says, of course, will be uh, held against him, uh, even as part of the, the, the offense. So why not? Okay. Okay, so for, from my own point of view, I think it's appalling for uh, the DSS to want to pull him the way they pulled him. Because, I mean, he has, he has a right to personal dignity. You shouldn't be pulling a man who wants to air his view, in as much as he's not saying something which is detrimental to perhaps the state or to anyone. So I feel like like he rightly said, uh, he's, 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 he's not yet, he has not yet been found guilty. It's only if he's found guilty. That's when his rights are limited. But as it stands right now, his, life, his rights are, are, are not limited. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your thoughts on this segment of the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back. We'll just uh, take a little break. And when we return, we'll be discussing terrorism and a new way to tackle it. Stay with us.